Welcome to another Tech Stuff Tuesday. This week we're going to look at speaker wire. What's the right size that you should have? What difference does it actually make? What are the effects of having too big of wire, too small of wire? So we've got four different samples here. We've got eight gauge wire, 12 gauge wire, 16 gauge wire, and 18 gauge wire. And typically you would find 18 gauge on mids and you might even find 16 gauge on mids. You generally don't find 12 gauge or eight gauge on mids. And we are going to use this on a sub. I've got a single sub and our amp should be capable of around 2000 watts. Now, one consideration with the speaker wire in terms of your selection, why would you choose one over the other? Well, the wire that you should be using is going to be somewhat dependent on the length of the wire and the impedance that you're playing at. Impedance does matter. Why? Because a greater impedance has a lower amperage. So you have lower current, you can use a smaller wire. In a lot of these cases with subs, we're talking about half ohm, one ohm, two ohms. That's more current, you're gonna need a bigger wire. So can you have too big? We'll find out. When it's too small, what happens? We'll find out. We're gonna test all that in two different ways. One, we're gonna show it on SPL. There may not be a big difference, but a difference is a difference. We're going to do it on a burp scenario like for SPL, but also in a prolonged usage like music. I'm gonna play a tone and just hold it and see what kind of drop we have over that period of time. Additionally, we're gonna look at thermal imaging. We're gonna see what this wire is actually doing after you play on it quite a bit. And this is our setup. I've got a Banhammer V1 prototype. I know it'll take plenty of power. Uh, the coil's not gonna get hot, which will skew the results of uh, going back-to-back -back testing. So we're good to go there. I have this amplifier that I don't even know what it is or why I have it. Uh, but I do and we're gonna use it. I have no idea how much power it's gonna make at this point. I've never tested it. So we're going to check each wire individually, starting with the smallest and then to the largest. First up is the 18 gauge. And because I don't know how much power this amp is going to make, I'm going to use this as the baseline for the power levels uh, to follow on the other wire. So we're gonna try a few different power levels uh, hopefully we'll find a, a maximum that we can get out of this. We'll make notes on all of that so we can compare them and you can see the difference that uh, impedance makes along with the size of the wire and that kind of thing. So the meter is set up. Let's get to testing. So here's what we're looking at. This is where the power will display. This is where the SPL will display. We've got our voltage maximum, our amperage maximum, our impedance maximum, and that's at the maximum recorded SPL. So we can see precisely how many amps and volts and the impedance uh, that all of this is happening. So you can see the difference between the different wire. I'm gonna do four different power levels. I'm gonna do 250 watts, 500 watts, 1000 watts, and then as much as I can possibly squeeze out of the amp. We're comparing wire to wire. We're not going for a maximum number. This is not a show of how much the power the amp can make or what the sub is capable of. This is strictly wire to wire to wire to wire comparison using SPL. And there you go, at 3.3 ohms, uh, the only power we can really get out of it is just shy of 1400 watts, which isn't too awful, all things considered. 
but we got 20.7 amps on that. That is right about the time it started to clip. Uh, even one volume click back, full volume might be right at the edge there, but I know it did just barely start to clip there. 20, almost 21 amps on that tiny, tiny wire is where you could audibly tell something was going on. So now we're going to do a little bit lower power. We're gonna go down to that thousand watt mark and we're going to do a musical comparison. I'm gonna do real time SPL for 30 seconds. So not even that long, 30 seconds. And we're gonna see what kind of drop we get at a thousand watts on the 18 gauge wire. Now it is worth noting this tone that I'm using only runs for 15 seconds. So there's gonna be a short break in the middle of it. That is normal, but we're gonna watch this real time. You can watch impedance real time, amperage, voltage, all of that in real time. And we're gonna see how much we lose and make note of it over the duration of the uh, time period, compare that to the others. Uh, if you didn't notice uh, when I was showing all the wire, all the wires are exactly the same length. They're just under four feet long. I've changed out wire and now we've got the 16 gauge and we're gonna do the same battery of tests to have the exact same comparative data. If you aren't already subscribed, consider subscribing. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notification bell every time we do a new video. So now we're going to do the same power levels 250 watts, 500, 1000, and then the most that I can manage to get out of it, period. Now onto the 12 gauge. We did see some difference between the 18 and 16. Not sure that we'll see a whole lot of difference with the 12, but we're gonna check it out. Did you know we have an e-commerce store? It's emfcaraudio.com. 
www.carsaudio.com and you can buy all kinds of car audio goodies on that website. Now we've swapped out to the 8 gauge wire and uh, you may have noticed there wasn't a lot of change in the other one so I'm expecting very little to no change with 8 gauge wire but we will check the data and see. So what kind of data did we see and what did we learn from all this? Well, the 18 gauge, you probably shouldn't use uh, unless you're maybe 250 watts, then you're okay. We're talking about eight amps of current. Everything seemed to be okay there. Uh, 500 watts from a burp, yeah, you could do it. Um, you're not gonna see an SPL difference. We didn't see that uh, any difference up through the, the larger wire. Um, but if you did notice over playing with music, it did start to get warm pretty quickly. Uh, so I think your, your limitation uh, from music wise, you wouldn't want to use 18 gauge. It's, it's really not desirable unless you're around, you know, maybe 200 watts, 250 watts, and then you could be okay. Now, uh, once you move up to the 16 gauge, 500 watts, no problem. Uh, burping through all that, you're totally fine. Um, even at 1,480 watts, um, 21 amps of current, 21.7, um, we still got the same number as the larger wire. So for a four foot run, around 1,500 watts, 16 gauge wire, you won't see a difference at all. Uh, it did take a little while to warm up um, it wasn't nearly as drastic, uh, but it did warm up a little bit at that thousand watts. Uh, so 18 amps of current, 16 gauge, thousand watts, you're still okay. Um, it's not necessarily the best thing, but you're okay. Um, something to note, with uh, heat comes more resistance. And if you were watching, between 18 gauge and 16 gauge, we actually saw an impedance difference, very small, but we did see an impedance difference. And you can also see that as it get, is getting hotter on the musical runs too. So go back and, and watch that and pay attention to what's happening with the impedance as the wire is heating up. Uh, so again, back to the burp numbers, um, 16 gauge, 1500 watts, you're probably fine. Um, many, many years ago, uh, I tested at 2000 watts and did not see a difference. Um, I couldn't recreate that in this test because of the impedance that we were playing on that amp. Um, but at the very least, 1500 watts, you're okay. Um, on to 12 gauge, everything matched uh, pretty closely to eight gauge. Eight gauge is completely unnecessary um, for 1500 watts or a thousand watts. Um, Realistically, if you think about it from DC current standpoint, to power an amplifier, you can put 40 amps of current on it and it's okay. So when we're at 21 amps of current, we're only halfway to capacity. Um, realistically, I know you can put over 3000 watts uh, and you're probably not gonna see a difference with eight gauge, or if you do, it's gonna be very minuscule. Maybe a few tenths of a dB, which is not audible. 
eight gauge really is not necessary until you're over that uh, you know 4,000 level and even then you're probably not going to see a whole lot of difference um, the upper limits of that are going to be pretty high especially for a burp uh, but 12 gauge on uh, 1500 watts or less absolutely sufficient you're going to gain absolutely nothing going bigger and um, 14 gauge you'd probably be okay too um, you really didn't see a difference after 16 so 16 and 12 did the same so that just goes to show for your you know pretty much entry level under 2000 watts you don't need gigantic wire um, 16 gauge did heat up a little bit 12 gauge didn't at all so 12 or 14 gauge is going to be my recommendation for that power level um, 2000 watts or less and uh, you could probably even get away with 2500 maybe even 3000 watts on that 12 gauge and never hear a difference for SPL purposes on a musical average you might see a couple tenths but again that's a couple tenths it's not a huge amount it's completely inaudible if it's less than 1 dB you can't differentiate uh, so this just goes to show you don't need gigantic wire uh, if your subs are rated for a thousand watts and they don't take eight gauge wire or two eight gauge wire so you have a four gauge input it doesn't matter you don't need that a 12 gauge input is perfectly fine that's what we've got on low ballers uh, the revision one is rated for 900 rms and you can tell from this wire you're not going to see a difference at all uh, you're you're not going to you can run um, two runs of 16 gauge um, from one terminal to jump it over and a single 16 gauge and it's going to be fine um, 14 gauge also fine but those will support a 12 gauge input you couldn't double it up to parallel them you have to run two separate wires but you can absolutely do that no problem and you just don't need larger period there's no reason for it so don't get hung up on having gigantic wire in all the applications that you simply do not need it if you found this video informational make sure you give it a thumbs up if you're not subscribed consider subscribing we post these kind of things try to every week doesn't always happen but we do have a backlog of a ton of tech stuff tuesday videos you can go back and watch those on a playlist new ones are added every time we put up a new tech stuff tuesday video make sure you shop emfcaraudio.com for all of your car audio needs we do have new products coming out make sure you follow us on instagram and facebook and you can get product updates there's an emf audio only group on facebook you can also get in on that you can also support us on patreon in the links below with the instagram and facebook and i'll see you again in another tech stuff tuesday